These grassy plains near the foot of Mount Kenya were once home to a thriving population of black rhinoceros. But by the early 1970s, poachers had killed the last surviving rhino in the area. This is Solio Ranch. Here for the past 30 years, Cortland Parfit has been providing a safe haven for both the black and white rhino, where they can live in peace and rebuild their diminishing numbers without the fear of death. The rhinoceros is one of the oldest mammals still roaming the earth today. Once a symbol of nature's bounty, the rhinoceros has become a victim of man's greed. The word rhinoceros means horn-nosed. The rhino's horns, its most prominent feature, have also become its death warrant. No other mammal on the face of the earth has been as devastated by poaching. When mining tycoon Cortland Parfit arrived in Kenya in 1957, he came in the tradition of Papa Hemingway and Teddy Roosevelt. So I was always, always had been a hunter, and I was really, really thrilled with, with what I saw in, in, the, in East Africa. I came back every year until I bought this ranch. But when Cortland Parfit and his late wife Claude bought Solio Ranch in 1966, this once ardent hunter went through an unusual transformation. The more we worked with animals on this ranch, the less interest I had in hunting. And finally, I just got it completely out of my mind and I more or less flipped, as you might say. I never want to see one shot again either. I haven't... Uh, Pulled the trigger for 20 years, I don't think. Parfit credits Claude, whom he calls an ardent conservationist, for changing his attitude about hunting. She is really responsible for the conservation of this black rhinoceros and everything else you see in here. That was her life, actually, for, for almost 30 years. She became a great photographer through all this. But she was in here every day of her life while she was while we were here. Claude Parfit's love of wildlife was expressed in her many photographs of Solio's most charismatic animals. She attained international fame as her works were exhibited in some of the world's most prestigious galleries. Cortland and Claude Parfit started their sanctuary in 1970, after they discovered the body of a poached rhino on the ranch. We came upon the remains of the last rhino, probably in this area. Now, rhinos were indigenous to where we're standing. This was the beginning of an unprecedented slaughter. In the next 15 years, Kenya's black rhino population went from 20,000 to a mere 300 animals. The Parfits decided it was time to protect these animals, so they fenced off part of their ranch and put up an 8-foot high, 33-mile-long wire fence around the entire area later fortified with 8,000 volts of electric power. Well, this fence is a great deterrent to any animals, either side. Those that are in, leave it alone after they've been up against it. Those that are outside, stay away from it. So it is a, 
very important aspect of keeping rhinos especially protected inside. After the fence was completed, the Kenya Wildlife Department rounded up most of the remaining black rhinos left in the country. They were tranquilized, then transported to this new protected sanctuary. We moved in 20 some odd rhinos from all over Kenya, one here, one there, so on and so forth, where they were endangered. By the time we got them all in here, there were no rhinos left in Kenya. They could not safely provide uh, a place for them in the national parks because the poaching had already started there as well. So it sounded like a good idea to try and save this creature. Over the next 10 years, the Parfits brought in more black rhinos. Some were survivors of poaching, others were displaced by human settlement. Their widespread origins helped ensure a broad gene pool to prevent inbreeding. Sixteen white rhinos were then brought in from South Africa. Both black and white flourished together and each species began to breed in record numbers and so were saved from almost certain extinction. Unfortunately, Claude Parfit passed away a few years ago, but her husband continues to carry on Claude's dream of making Solio Ranch home to more rhinos than anywhere else in the world. The Solio Rhino Reserve is like a step back in time when large mammals ruled the plains and savannas of East Africa. There's no danger in the genetic memory of these animals. No poachers, no gunshots, no murdered parents. Just an abundance of food and an equal abundance of available mates. My late wife and I really fell in love with this with property to begin with. And I think half of that feeling came from the diversity of wildlife that was already indigenous on this ranch, living compatibly with the cattle. In addition to its 50 black and 71 white rhinos, Solio has about 6,400 head of cattle and 3,000 migratory animals. Parfit bankrolled his rhino conservation program by raising prize-winning cattle on the ranch. Crossing European Charlie with disease-resistant Kenyan Boran, he created a hybrid that was perfect for this part of Africa. Solio Ranch has broken all records for breeding African rhinos. From an initial population of 23 blacks and 16 whites, Solio has bred a total of 178 animals. There are many differences between black and white rhinos. The blacks are smaller than the whites. They're much more territorial and short-tempered. Even the female will charge without much provocation. A black rhino bull will lord over a territory of up to one and a half square miles, which he marks with a border of urine and dung heaps. The black rhino is a browser and has a pointed, flexible upper lip, which enables it to tear off even the toughest of leaves and thorniest of branches. Its bottom horn can grow to over four feet. It's more solid than the whites and it's more sought after by poachers. 
The southern white rhino is indigenous to the southern part of Africa. Though it grows much larger than its black cousin, it's much less aggressive. The white rhino has a wide mouth so that it can clip that grass. And white is the Dutch word for wide. It's also called a square-lipped rhino. This white rhino or square-lipped rhino grows to 6,000 pounds. It's very visible, more docile, only eats grass. Black and white rhinos have many physical characteristics in common. They're both very nearsighted. The lateral placement of their eyes means they have to turn their heads from side to side in order to see straight ahead. They both have large pointed ears which rotate to pick up sounds from many directions and that's useful for brushing off pesky oxpeckers that sometimes sneak inside to search for tasty little parasites. And they both have very thick, layered skin which protects their bodies from sharp grasses and thorn bushes. Being much more sociable than black rhinos, white rhinos gather in groups of up to 18 or so individuals and frequent open habitat. While the blacks of both sexes usually remain concealed in heavy brush. Rhino mothers are accompanied by their latest calf and often one or more related juveniles. Youngsters who are being temporarily ignored by their own mothers who are producing another sibling, a sort of rhino daycare. The mating game is the same for both black and white rhinos. Bulls regularly seek out cows to check their reproductive status. And when a bull finds a female in estrus, he moves her away from the group. Once alone with her, he begins his courtship ritual, which looks more like a lover's squabble than romantic foreplay. The fighting sometimes gets quite vicious, each taking turns charging at one another, before they finally settle down to do their part to increase the population. Once mating is over, which can sometimes take up to 45 minutes, the males and females go their separate ways. The bull resumes his life in seclusion and the cow returns to her family. Hidden in a thicket, the female, usually alone, bears a single calf. The calf will nurse on demand and begin grazing as early as two months old. After a year, it's weaned, but remains close to its mother for up to another two to three years until its next sibling arrives. Rhino mothers get top marks for their parenting skills and remain with their young until they're fully grown, and they've reason to be proud. Rhinos are herbivores, the whites eat grass, and the blacks mainly forage on acacias and other bushes. Mud baths are an important part of a rhino's daily activities. As do elephants, they love to wallow in the mud or roll around in the dust. This protects their skin from insects and sunburn. Rhinos use their horns for several purposes. To shovel in the ground to find mineral salts, to fight for territory or a female, or to defend themselves and their young. But it's these horns, the rhino's most distinguishing feature, that may very well eventually be the cause of its extinction. For centuries, rhinos have been slaughtered for their horns which have been sought out by several traditional Arabic and Asian cultures. In Yemen, a carved rhino horn handle on a jambaya, the traditional dagger worn by men, is still a highly valued status symbol.
And in China, Taiwan and South Korea, rhino horns are still being used for medical and beauty treatments. How much is it? 15, 15, RMB. The illegal market for rhino horns continues to flourish. As with drug trafficking, where there's a demand, there will always be a supply, until the desired commodity no longer exists. For the black rhino, this could mean extinction. At a ranch near Solio, a black rhino was recently killed and its horns cut from its head. After hearing the news about the rhino killed at a nearby ranch, Cortland Parfit comes into the Solio Reserve to check on his animals. The image of the slain body of the area's last indigenous black rhino remains etched in his mind. This memory and the promise made to his late wife, Claude, continue to fuel his commitment to preserve the Solio rhinos, whatever the cost. And you know, Parfit is relieved to find out from his tracker that the Solio rhinos have not been bothered. He attributes their continued safety to his super fence, which has been patrolled daily for the past 15 years by Solio's armed security force. We've had one incident of poaching when the <laughs> security were on leave. Poachers got away with a horn, left the rhinoceros. Otoro, yeah. the three white rhinos, the mother and the two young females. Yeah. The one young female's mother went to Nakuru National Park yeah. and the large female yeah. with the other calf yeah. took it under its wing, right? Yeah. Since the Solio program began over 20 years ago, 64 black and 24 white rhinos have been relocated to stock Kenya's national parks and private game sanctuaries. The rhino travels to its new home, where it's kept in a holding pen and revived. And as it's finally released in the national park, it sometimes tries to do a little payback for the indignities it suffered while being translocated. Today, Kenya's national parks and private game sanctuaries are reporting a steady recovery due to the successful breeding of the translocated Solio rhinos. But the last thing that Parfit wants to see is one of the Solio rhinos who survived the ordeal of translocation dying a violent death at the hands of poachers. He demands that these parks and private mm -hmm. sanctuaries be protected with adequate fences and armed patrols. We moved three into the Abadares uh, two years ago. One of them has already been poached up there. Kenya has some beautiful national parks. I believe they have to be fenced because the human population, which is geometric, will eventually need the, all this land the animals are using today. The browsers, the grazers, uh, they can wipe a, a small farmer out overnight. And you have to fence them to keep the animals in and the humans out, if what it amounts to. But even with all of Solio's safeguards, poachers have managed to disturb the tranquility within the rhino reserve. Parfit was wakened early one morning and was told about the would-be poachers. Solio's security staff quickly took charge of the problem, and before any rhinos were harmed, peace was restored on the reserve. Did you see the black rhino with the whites behind this? Rare sight. Dumea. And you and This is a large white male. Has come to see what's going on. Very curious. 
Parfit has been repeatedly criticised for building a personal zoo and playing God with the reserve's gene pools. He also continues to be widely criticised for his belief that rhinos need to be fenced in for their own survival. In a perfect world, there wouldn't be any need to fence in a wild animal, nor would there be any need for private ranches to provide highly endangered species with a safe and peaceful place to breed. But this isn't a perfect world, not when the unbridled greed of so many members of one dominant species cause the extermination of so many other species. Solio's success has not only earned the president of Kenya's continued blessing, but his recognition of the rhino as a national treasure. Kenya's president also declared the rhino a special animal to be afforded maximum protection. We're very fortunate in having an area suitable for the black rhinoceros on this ranch. And we've been credited with saving this animal in Kenya. The real heroes in wildlife conservation will be those that will be able to save the Serengeti and the Maasai Mara, where you have several million animals still living as they were for hundreds of years. Thanks to such private sanctuaries and the stepped-up protection in Kenya's national parks, the rhino is making a slow but expensive comeback. Since 1986, their population has nearly doubled. In the past decade, Solio's rhino birth rate stood at a spectacular 12%, unequaled anywhere in the world. Solio Ranch has become a model throughout Africa for rhino conservation. These days, good news in wildlife conservation is rare, but the story of Solio Ranch stands out as an unqualified success, one of the most positive to come out of Africa in decades.